This, 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 this is the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson and Omni Hotels and Resorts. Brought to you by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Choose VA. Veterans get the benefits you've earned. Visit choose.va.gov. And by GEICO. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Now, your hosts, Danny Sarek and Brad Shan. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for being with us on the Cowboy Hour. Thank you very much. Happy Monday. Thank you all for being here. And, yes, that is... That is a live studio audience wherever we go, and there are people, it becomes a studio. You are a studio audience, and yes, we are available uh, for public (laughs) consumption uh, this year (laughs) in a return to uh, semi-normal. The Cowboy Hour will come to you every Monday night, except when it's not on Monday night, um, from the south concourse of the uh, Ford Center at the Star, where it's air-conditioned, and well lit and a perfect setting for our guests and we uh, look forward to having many of you come. Uh, You won't always get as many family and friends of guests as we have tonight, but we welcome the family of the great Blake Jarwin. Nice to have all of you here. And Blake Jarwin, thank you. Oh, absolutely. For being here. Yeah. And, um, See, I usually wait for a commercial or something to tell people what we have been talking about, to bring them like a little peek behind the curtain. I'm just going to tell you that the last conversation we were having before we went on the air involved (laughs) the cheese fries at Eskimo Joe's in Stillwater, where one person up here matriculated, and uh, something about tequila shots in beer I didn't catch the whole thing. You know what? Silly me for forgetting that anything I talk about off air manages to find its way on air no matter how embarrassing or self-deprecating it might be thinking maybe there's like a silent understanding that Brad's not going to share everything that I talk about off air but uh, quickly forgotten about that. And in fact you know that I actually do keep them some things to the same. Yeah, which tells everyone uh, what exactly we talk about if it doesn't make air, considering the things you do share. Can so thank you for that. Only use your imagination. <laughs> thank you very much. So, um, Blake, three days off? Do, do you, I mean, you guys do not catch a break in terms of getting any rhythm or momentum or anything like that, do you? No, it's been kind of uh, crazy so far with our eight-day uh, preseason weeks and then now uh, – this kind of schedule, we got three days off, and then we really won't find routine until like pretty much after the bye week, and then we're headed into the Thursday games. After so. the bye week. Now, wait, you've got Sunday, Monday night, then you've got Sunday. So then you're finally and reaching Sunday. routine, yeah. So that's not quite the bye week. Right. But, I mean, I guess you'll go Sunday into a Monday. Right. And then into a Sunday, but at least both of those are at home, so there's no right. travel involved. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't look that far. Ahead. No, <laughs> it's it's day day. it's hard to do. But I mean, this is such a a, ru- a business of routine. So um, you came back together today. Mm-hmm. Were you actually together or were you virtual? Because for those of you who haven't heard, Zach Martin and Brandon Knight are off the COVID list, and <laughs> and Randy Gregory's on it. Ooh. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there you go. And Michael Gallup has gone on injured reserve, and that'll be a minimum of three weeks while his ankle heals. So were you meeting live and in person yes, today? Yes, we were here. Uh, we were mostly in individual meetings. Um, we did do uh, a little bit together, but not too much. Uh, still trying to make sure we take the precautions to where we're not spreading it, um, hopefully to anybody, but hopefully also minimizing the opportunity to spread it. You anything. know, last year, and of course, Here's another thing we talked about before we went on the air. So Danny uh, came on at mid-season last year, and uh, her first Cowboys hour, Blake was the guest with uh, his legs still in a contraption. And were you in your living room? or Pretty were you? fresh off some crutches, I think. I, I was <laughs> somewhere down there in a corner. Not were in the room yeah. with us. No, no, no. Good. Oof. Heavens, heaven, <laughs> heaven for Fen. Uh, 
but were you at home or were you in the building? I was in the building, yeah. Kind of where our player entrance is now. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think your hair was a lot longer, wasn't it? You were like gonna thinking about cutting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. And now I'm still in that same phase. Like, do I grow <laughs> oh, yeah, but it, yeah, it's not, it, you know, it's not nearly body. as long. It's not nearly as long. But yeah. on the other hand, you, are, you do have to fit it into a helmet now, which right, was not right. an issue at that point. But at any rate, uh, so that was the case last year. Uh, and now, so you're together, and there is some contact, uh, and, and it's very limited and, and well controlled. I'm wondering if the um, COVID business is distract last year everybody there was no vaccine everybody was being tested all the time and you had their protocols and blah 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 so now so you didn't have, i think you had like four guys miss games something like that five all right, year right well it's a different story now uh as we're seeing and i'm just wondering if it's if you're finding it more of a distraction than you thought it would be something to deal with how does how does that work yeah uh, maybe not necessarily a distraction but um something that we have to work through as a team um make sure that we're taking proper precaution you know in the building as well as outside of the building and making sure that we're putting ourselves in a good spot to where we're available for sundays um and also just you know keeping each other protected so um it is definitely uh, you know, not the easiest thing to get around, but we're doing a good job, I think, as a team. And by the way, those of you uh, who hopefully will come join us uh, one or more Monday nights throughout the year, uh, except for immediate family and staff, that's why people who come to the show, we can have you here and are delighted to be able to have you here. And we can't have you line up and sign autographs and that kind of thing because that's, that's still a COVID thing. So it's it's still kind of with us um but how are you feeling i'm feeling good uh physically uh, i feel great definitely things i'm still working through um just finding my body again and uh but definitely just gaining confidence day in and day out and uh pushing forward it's an interesting way to put it finding your body again what is it that you're looking for yeah, just uh trusting it i guess in certain things that you do whether it be a cut or whether you're blocking somebody and making sure that you still have the power um which it is there and you just have to i think convince yourself that everything's okay and i've done a you know i've made tremendous strides throughout camp and uh it's just going to continue to get better at what point throughout the off season did you make a cut or you were doing a route and you realized okay i'm back i, I can do this because you're coming off that knee surgery right you missed all of last season mm -hmm. so at what point in the off season did you realize okay i'm good i got this yeah it was about um probably two or three weeks before we got going for training camp and Dak was out here throwing with a few guys and i went out there and just started running around i was like look i'm gonna let it loose uh so when i get to training camp i feel okay and i feel like i can go do that stuff and at that moment it was kind of like okay uh you're good you can do these things and uh you've you've set a good foundation now it's time to build off this my recollection was you had never had anything like that injury right so can you explain for people who have never had to go through it especially as a competitive athlete the difference between yes i am aware that i am healthy enough to do that now the difference between that and not even thinking about it and just going and doing stuff knowing that you fully trust your leg and your back and all the rest yeah i think that um i think brit's done a great job with me of kind of building my confidence back throughout the off season um, like I said, trying to find how I move again and trust myself enough to do these things. And um, I'd say that confidence plays a big piece of it. I've, I've had a, a lot of reps, and I'm still not to where I want to be yet with everything, but I'm getting much better day in and day out. Uh, and they're putting me in positions where I'm not necessarily thinking about my body anymore. I'm thinking about what's going on on the field, and I think that's definitely helping me. Emotionally or mentally, did stepping out onto the field Thursday night feel any different or a little extra special? Yeah, it was uh, just for a second, the emotional aspect of it, uh, being back. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of good people uh, get me back to where I am today. So uh, um, those people, without them, I wouldn't be here right now. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful for that. Um, but it was definitely a kind of a surreal moment at first, and it was time to get going. Uh, have you ever been to SoFi Stadium? Yeah, that's where. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, I know. I know. I, I Headed know. back now. <laughs> Says since you since you went to emotionally and all of right, that. I right. mean, will you have some of the? I don't want to be that guy, but I guess I'm being that guy. Do you do you think you'll? Will it just be a football field? I think it'll Sunday? be a football field. Yeah, uh, I'm excited to go back actually um, and kind of conquer that demon. I guess in a sense.
Oh, so there is a demon to conquer. Yeah, I mean, in a way, but, you know, I'm not really too worried about it. Like I said, uh, I feel well. I f- my body's performing really good. Um, my mind's where it needs to be, so uh, I'm excited about that. Well, you probably feel like that stadium owes you a, <laughs> a day, at least a day, right? Yeah, maybe so, maybe so. When we talked to you at this point, like October last year, you were still early on in that recovery process and working through all of that. So now that you're on the other side of it, what did you learn about yourself, either personally or what you've put towards what you do on the field now? Yeah, how much you, uh, you really come to appreciate this game and what it means to you. Um, it's a big part of who I am, obviously. I've done it for so long. Um, without it, you kind, of, you kind of do have to find yourself. Who are you outside of football? And uh, I've had a great support system kind of help me along and, and, and you know, find meaning off the field. Uh, but also just how, uh, how much I wanted to be here with the guys, the team, the, uh, the camaraderie the competition of the game that I've missed so much. And, uh, you know, it's incredible to be back. Uh, I've got so much to learn and so much to, to improve on, um, but it's it's been awesome to be back. I don't mean this to be quite as wiseacre as it sounds. Um, I've actually been thinking a lot about it myself. Who who are you right. away from football? Yeah, uh, Right now, at this point in your life. I? Yeah. I'm a, a son to my two parents. I'm a brother uh, to my brother Garrett. Uh, husband to my wife Peyton um, you know by the uh, way Peyton's on the edge of her seat listening to the answer <laughs> to this question yeah, yeah. No doubt. Uh, you know I hope to be a, a mentor to a lot of young kids who uh, have aspirations to, to reaching their dreams fulfilling their dreams um, you know a person who who can be there and uh, you know help you push to be your better self you mentioned your wife real quick you know you guys got married in the off season I know she's here but how is married life treating you? Oh, it's been great. She's listening. Oh, she's looking right at me. <laughs> she, she's more than listening, Danny. Yeah, Come right, on. Right. That's one of those. That's no. Appreciate you can. Right <laughs> yeah. Nice. I mean, come on. Does it ha- does this dress make me look fat? No, come no. on. You can't, that's, you can't ask a man that question. I know you were very you were very excited when we were talking to you at that right, point last right. year. I remember you were deciding whether or not you wanted to cut your hair or leave it long for the wedding. Mm-hmm. We ended up cutting it. I cut the hair off. That was a big discussion we had. But no, it's been great. Uh, She's incredible. She's, uh, you know, someone who, who kind of helps me, um, you know, in dark times. She's there to kind of just listen to me and listen to me vent, whatever it may be about. But, um, you know, she's there for me and supports me, and I appreciate that. We it's, are, uh, we are excited awesome. and delighted to have Blake Jarwin as our guest on the Cowboys Hour this evening. And uh, we want to say a special hello to everyone listening, wherever you're listening, around the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. And uh, these little black boxes are cameras that are, Recording this digitally for uh, DallasCowboys.com. It'll be on the website. You can watch it whenever. So, hi, everybody. Happy Monday. Uh, We are going to take a quick break. Come right back. But first, we want to remind you that when it comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys, and by Lou Casey, the official bootmaker of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. We'll be right back with Blake Jarwin on the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour.
the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons and Omni Hotels and Resorts. Welcome back to the Star, to the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco, Texas, on the Cowboys Hour. Brad Sham, Danny Sarek, and our special guest, Cowboys tight end Blake Jarwin. I, I actually um, had some, you know, Danny's just beautiful in a picture of fashion wherever she goes, whatever she wears. I had some trepidations about wearing these little socks that you can't see with these deck shoes <laughs> until I saw Mr. Jarwin, who uh, kind of halfway talked himself into pants and shoes. <laughs> so um, Very proud of what I'm wearing. I, Very and, proud. And, and you you make it work, Blake. It's outstanding. It's, not a, it's it. not a TV show after all. <laughs> Even though it's there's a camera, it's uh, here for radio. And by the way, uh, there's going to be magically – as if by magic, right behind the black cord, right in the middle of the room there, a microphone is going to appear later for those of you sitting on that side of it to ask questions of Blake uh, later on in the show. But right now, it's still our turn. So one thing I noticed in training camp <clears throat> was that it seemed to me, it, maybe I just was paying attention differently, that you tight ends were spending more time after practice than I had seen you before working on the jugs mm -hmm. gun and you and Dalton Schultz especially seemed to spend a lot of time catching dozens of balls at close range and different angles and things was that my imagination or was that new uh, no that's new um, I think that uh, Dalton kind of picked that up last year um, after my injury um, and then we kind of just picked it up where he left off uh, at the beginning of training camp. We were actually out here today doing the same thing uh, after everybody had left. Uh, it's just kind of something that we want to make sure that we're ready when our opportunity comes, comes to us and, um, you know, make sure that we're there for the team. So we're going to do everything we can, take the extra 10, the extra 20 minutes after practice to uh, just make sure that we're good. At, at different distances? Or different speeds, or how does that work? Yeah, speeds, distances, angles, uh, kind of every kind of just weird – maybe something that doesn't feel comfortable. Maybe that's what you focus on that day, right? Or something that you've had trouble with. Um, and uh, so we've just kind of done that and uh, made it part of our routine. How many of those do you take every day? Uh, probably over 100. We actually, we watched a video in a in training camp about Tony Gonzalez and he talks about how he had a, a year where he had, you know, a lot of drop passes. He was, and he said, well, I'm going to make a point and I'm going to stay. I'm going to get in early to practice and catch 100 balls. I'm going to stay after practice and catch 100 balls. And uh, so we've kind of taken that and said, hey, look, we're going to make that part of our own routine. You know, uh, I'm, I'm so fascinated by your saying that because I was because there were a couple of drops in the game. I don't think I've ever seen you drop one. Maybe you have, but I don't remember it. And I think I've seen every game you've played. Uh, and I asked a guy who has played professional football the other day how – does someone who's a good athlete, who's a good receiver, who occasionally has that issue, how do you work on that? And the answer that he gave me was, you just practice catching the ball a lot. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, yeah. The repetition of it, uh, feeling the catch, like I said, feeling the different angles, the different speeds, uh, getting comfortable being uncomfortable sometimes and uh as a pass catcher sometimes we go through you know phases where maybe we're just not in tune to where we need to be and so sometimes you just have to work your way through it and uh that's kind of the approach we take last year with the injury due to COVID protocols you weren't really allowed to be in the building or in the tight end room you know it would have all been virtual if you were reaching out to your teammates or anything like that what has the dynamic been like now that you are back in that room uh it's been incredible uh obviously I've got a great relationship with Dalton uh, and our coach, uh, Linda Wells, he's done a great job of just kind of helping me feel at home again in the, in the room. And uh, the respect that we all have for each other in that room is awesome. And then it's, a, it's also a tight room, right? We don't have very many guys, so we get to know each other really well. And um, I think that's the best part about it. The chemistry we have in that room is, is awesome, and we push each other to be better every day. And I think that's it's awesome. It's, um, it's, it's, we're building – each other to be better day in and day out. Can we talk about a couple of other guys in the room? McEwen is one that fans don't know very much, mm -hmm. but he had a great camp. Right. And everyone was looking forward to uh, uh, him being back in there. He's Now he's hurt. He'll be back at some point. But mm -hmm. what, what do you see in his development? Does he remind you of you at all? Yeah, Sean's got a great work ethic. Uh, man, I love to see him play. I think he did make a huge strides in camp, and uh, he was prepared for camp. 
Uh, and on, you know, unfortunately, he's had a, an ankle deal to, to work through, but he'll be back, and we're excited to have him in the room and excited to have him back on the field with us. He's an incredible player. He brings a lot to the table for us. Uh, he's young, and he's full energy, and uh, contributes a lot on special teams as well. So, And he's a really good receiver, and he was an undrafted free agent. Right. And stop me right. if it's getting near anything you see when you look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you see any of yourself yeah, in Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like he's, he, he may, you know, I think he's a great young guy to have in the room. And uh, uh, he's... He he's been a good part of our our my my thing just went quiet. Is that supposed to be like that? Your headset yeah. did. No, I'm good. Sorry, okay. kind of <laughs> threw me off. But no, uh, yeah, I see a lot of myself in Sean. Uh, but I see a guy who who's willing to do what he needs to do to to make plays and be a part of this offense. And uh, I'm excited to get him back. And the other guy that intrigues me is Jeremy Sprinkle, who was we saw him in Washington for several years, uh, but not an old guy. He's like five years. What does he? What skill set does he bring? Sprinkle, um, he's even keel. He comes in and he works every day. He never complains. He's a yes sir kind of guy. He'll do what he needs to do uh, to contribute to our team, to our offense, to special teams, whatever it may be. And uh, he's been an awesome part of our, our tight end room, our dynamic, uh, great personality, uh, and the guys that we want in the room, honestly. So he's been great to have. You touched on Coach Walls a bit, who's in his second year, right, under uh, head coach Mike McCarthy and part of that staff. I'm curious to know specifically what he's done to help elevate your game, especially this season so far, this off season since you were hurt last year. You know, what, what has he done to help you? Yeah, he's pulled me into his office a few times, and uh, we just talked about things, whether it be something on the field or off the field or, hey, Blake, how's it going, man? How are you feeling? How's your body feel? How's your mind? Uh, where you at with everything and um, also just on the field he understands uh, you know what we do well as a just individuals and also what we need to work on and uh, you know I've got a long list of things I need to work on but he's like Blake hey look let's take it day by day uh, let's get better at one or two things and then let's let's you know remember this is a long journey that we're on uh, together and uh, man he's been awesome he's always got a positive attitude and he's a great leader for us. What do you think is on your list of things you need to work on? <laughs> Uh, you know, obviously blocking has been one thing that I've always had an emphasis on. And, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to work on that first level and definitely second level now. Um, you know, I've had a, a play that happened the other night that I'm, you know, it's just not who I am as a player. So I'm out to prove that now and uh, to put that behind me. Okay, and stop there for just a second. When that something like that happens, I maybe should ask your wife this. When something <laughs> like that happens, uh, how long does it take you to let that go? Um, I just guess it depends on the situation. That one, that one bothers me because I, I need to do better for my teammates, right? I need to uh, give Zeke a chance to, to make a big play there and to, to help our offense. And so that's why that one eats at me. Uh, it's behind me now, but uh, it'll always be a part of how I'm going to become a better football player. Um, and so uh, you learn from that stuff. You get better from that, that kind of thing. It's, uh, you never want it, but it's, a, you know, it's part of the game. You learn and uh, you move on. Okay, blocking first level, second level, next on the list. Yeah, just uh, continue to push myself to understand defenses, to understand how they're trying to, you know, play against us and what teams want to do against us. We're a very explosive offense, uh, and we've got so many pieces that can, you know, make a big play at any moment. So uh, what a team's trying to do to us at all times, and, uh, you know, just how do we exploit that? You all went head to toe, or toe to toe, rather, with the reigning Super Bowl champs. Close game, held your own. What did you learn about the offense in that game? Yeah, we uh, we made a lot of good plays. Um, you know, we've got so many weapons on our team, and we all want to be successful. And we don't care who has the ball in their hands. We want to see us score points and help the team and obviously get the win at the end of the day. And that didn't happen, um, but we did have a lot of good stuff come out of it. Uh, we'll be better for it. Um, I think that as an offense, we want to improve, you know, in the red zone. We didn't really perform and produce like we think we should have. So that will be an emphasis, obviously, for me. And um, – Make sure I do my part to help us succeed in that area. The one thing that made me chuckle uh, in terms of just watching it and uh, anticipating what's coming for the next 16 weeks, there was uh, there was more pre-snap motion and stuff. It looked like a, a hockey line change half the time. Three guys going here, you stop here, motion, set, back the – more than you used to do, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Kellen has thrown in a Kellen lot more. Kellen does a great that. job of, yeah, and we knew that was going to be a, an emphasis for us going into training camp that we were going to do a lot of motions and uh, movements pre snap. And it uh, just gives us a, you know, a good look of what the defense is doing and uh, maybe we have leverage on somebody or, you know, a certain look and uh, take advantage of it and exploit that area. So here, I was wondering about this during camp, listening to Mike McCarthy talk about uh, um, 
that kind of thing and being deceptive. And, I'm, and I was specifically thinking about some of the skill sets that you and Tony Pollard have. So you have some skills that are not necessarily traditional tight end skills. Pollard's got, Pollard has worked at wide receiver so. Mm -hmm. So am I, am I dreaming if I say, you know, you could line up with Pollard in the backfield and you and Schultz at tight end, but you might not be a tight end or he might not be a running back right. just because he's wearing 20 and lining up in the backfield yeah. or just because you're off the tackle's hip and wearing a tight end. You might not be a tight end. Uh, am, I, am I at all? No, you're, you're, you're right. Um, that's kind of very versatile kind of offense we have uh, with all our players and uh, Tony, man, you could line him up anywhere, and uh, they better cover him because he's so explosive and he's fun to watch. Uh, and, you know, I think that's a, a great part of how we uh, approach the game, um, how we, we ga game plan things, um, uh, just try to keep defenses on their toes. And if they're going to give us certain looks, we're going to take advantage of it. All right. Now, we're, when we come back, we're going to see if we can uh, get to the bottom of this uh, fierce Jarwin Schultz rivalry that is threatening to rip so this fierce. team apart. Uh, <laughs> it's just a joke, friends. <laughs> it's just a joke. Cowboys fans, we need you to apply to become the NFL Fan of the Year presented by Captain Morgan. Go to Dallas Cowboys social platforms and fill out the application explaining why you love the Cowboys. The winner gets tickets to this year's Super Bowl. Go to Dallas Cowboys social platforms to apply. The Miller Lite Cowboys Hour is brought to you by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's, the official pizza of the Dallas Cowboys. And by Omni Frisco at Omni Frisco Hotel. Kick off your stay at the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys with style. Cool off in the elevated pool, savor upscale comfort food at neighborhood services, and enjoy all the dining and entertainment options the star has to offer. Visit OmniHotels.com slash Frisco to learn more and turn the next home game into a weekend getaway. And we'll be right back with Cowboys tight end Blake Jarwin on the Cowboys Hour.
Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons and Omni Hotels and Resorts. Brad Sham and Danny Sarek and our very special guest, Cowboys tight end Blake Jarwin tonight on the Cowboys Hour. We're at the Ford Center at the Star. Yes, you may applaud Blake Jarwin robustly, even if you're related to him or live near him or that <laughs> still you could applaud him and make him feel good. Uh, okay, so um, <laughs> you and Dalton really are that good of friends, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we are. And now uh, you went from being the guy in the room, then you were hurt, so he couldn't do anything about that. He had a great year. Great year. Now you're splitting reps because mm-hmm. you're still getting fully back. Right. But when do you go back to being the guy in the room again? Uh, you know, we'll leave that for another day. Uh, I have no, no problem. No, sharing. this is the day you're here. We're going to do it. <laughs> now is a really good day. Uh, I've got no, no problem, uh, you know, splitting reps with a guy like that. Uh, works his tail off. Obviously, had, like you said, a great year last year. Proved himself to be a great tight end in this league and uh, to be productive. Um, and uh, a guy who's smart, man. That guy's smart. And uh, he's played a lot of football now. And uh, he's got a good experience behind him. So uh, to, to, to split reps with that guy, I have no problem with. Uh, like you said, we're, we're great friends. Uh, we have great chemistry. Uh, I think the best part about us is uh, we love to push each other to be better. Uh, we're very competitive with each other. And I think that that's uh, going to pay huge dividends as we move forward. Have you guys gone into Kellen Moore's office and begged for more 12 personnel? <laughs> we haven't exactly done that, but we've done things close. Uh, we've used our tight ends coach, <laughs> Coach Wells, to do that for us in a way, I guess. <laughs> so you've, you have – and I don't, I'm guessing it's not begging. I'm guessing it's, Lunda, make sure he knows how good we are when we're <laughs> right, both right, on the right, field. Yeah, yeah. More along that yeah, line? Exactly. Well, Coach Wells will ask, like, hey, what do you guys want this week or what do you guys think is a, you know, could be a big part of our, our game plan? And we're like, well, here's exactly what we need. We need, 12 <laughs> we need a lot of 12. <laughs> do you, um, especially with the year that Dalton had this year and, and coupled with your complete physical recovery, have you looked at some of the teams – you just played one uh, – who have – who are two or three – deep at that position and say hey look here's how we could maybe do some of this yeah absolutely uh and i think that we have the right mindset to make this kind of situation work uh we just want to be productive for the offense and for the team really that's the ultimate goal is to to make sure that uh, we take care of opportunities and and we're there when we need to be there and so whatever is asked of us uh, that's what we're going to do besides what you've seen from dalton and how he's grown on the field He's no longer working anymore. You've been in the room with him for a couple of years. How have you seen him grow as a leader, especially coming back this year when you weren't able to be mm-hmm. in the room last year and he stepped up in yeah, that role? Yeah, he's done a tremendous job uh, just overall. Uh, I think he's found confidence in, in himself. Uh, he plays with swagger on the field. He understands the game. He understands the game plan. He understands our opponent also. And um, like I say, he just does a great job overall. And uh, I think that it's it's awesome that, uh, you know, me and him get to sit in a room together and, uh, and just – play the game of football together. Is he still the player rep? He is, yes. For the, He's the, the representative of the players to the NFL Players Association. Mm-hmm. Would, would that be a job you'd like to have? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to give it away the other day. I was like, nope, sorry, man. How did, the, how did he – no player wants to be that. Uh, who, how did he come to be the player rep? Uh, did he seek that job? I think he was an alternative, and um, I'm trying to remember who our rep was before him. I think it was Byron Jones, and then when Byron left, he just kind of fell right into the position. So he was he the alternate to Byron? Yes. And yes. and and in this era, where it seems to me like we're back to COVID again, the union and the league are negotiating on an ongoing basis about things, little daily things that the public never sees. Mm-hmm. Um, does that drive him nuts? Yeah, it's definitely just another thing he has to kind of deal with. He does a great job of uh, not letting that become a distraction, uh, but he's also on top of it, and he wants to make sure that we're abiding by all the rules and doing what we need to do and uh, to make sure that we're safe and uh, take care of the rules set in place by the NFL and the NFLPA. As you guys continue to you know, work through the season and sharing reps and, and all of that, because you are such close friends, is there any part of you that's like, oh, maybe I don't want as many reps for myself. Like, I want to share them with Dalton. Or does that ever kind of blur the line there? No, I don't I don't think so. Um, I know Coach Wells will do a great job of just putting us in. And, uh, you know, ultimately it's up to – it's him that we're looking at on the sideline trying to figure out what to, what 
you know, who's in. And uh, we have certain plays for, you know, each of us throughout the week and uh, things that one of us does well or the other one's done a good job on lately. And, um, you know, any time we're both on the field, that's a plus, right? So um, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's a great dynamic. Um, like I said, we've got great chemistry, so when we're out there together, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it's just it's good to be back with them. Uh, this team you're playing Sunday, have you played them ever? No, I was uh, I was not suited up. I believe last time I played. So, um, really, would have been hard years to ago. fathom years ago. Um, but th- which is the point? Right. This is not a team you play all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, how far in advance do you start looking at them? Uh, started last night. Uh, watched a little bit of some preseason games, and then uh, today we started on you know kind of putting a game plan together. And the coaches will have some stuff ready for us uh, tonight and obviously tomorrow. So. Uh, it just it starts now. Um, this is kind of like we talked about not really having a routine. Well, um, you know, when this kind of that we're moving through a week like this, you just kind of have to find time to, to start that kind of uh, game planning. So Tuesday is normally your day off. Tuesday is, yes. Yeah. Well, are, is tomorrow a day off? Yes. Okay. In a sense, yeah. But we've had three, so it's kind of like, well, I'm going to make sure I do some extra homework probably tomorrow. Uh, and what will that entail? What, just taking uh, taking the iPad home and watching more yeah, tape yeah. of them? Yeah, do that. I'll probably come up here and do some treatment and make sure my body feels right. Um, and then just make sure that I'm on top of everything. It can be kind of difficult to do some scouting uh, early in the year with teams doing a lot of unscouted looks. Um, but, uh, you know, you try to make sure that you're prepared as possible. That was going to be my question is there's probably not enough film right, right after just one game. So how far back are you looking at preseason or are you looking at last year? Uh, you go back. Uh, you'll do a little bit of preseason and then also last year. Um, there's a, I think, you know, yesterday Washington only ran 55 or 56 plays, so kind of a smaller sample size. Um, and so, But we'll use that as kind of a base and to understand of who they are and their, you know, personality and who they want to be as a defense and then uh, just kind of, go back and find things that this defensive coordinator likes to do. And their head coach was the Rams defensive coordinator right. last year. Yep. So do you go back and look at Rams stuff from last year? Yeah, you can. Uh, I don't – you know, everybody does it differently. We'll, we'll touch on it a little bit to make sure if, if we think it will be a big part of the game plan. But um, ultimately we'll focus on, you know, things that we have from uh, L.A. Chargers. So, Danny, am I remembering correctly when when we were talking to Blake last year, was archery a big part of the conversation? I was hoping you were going to bring it up, Brad. No, I was hoping we were going to save that because, yes, it is, and I have lots of questions on it. Fantastic. Honey, we got to go. go. I was looking (laughs) um, at our show last year, and coincidentally, the day that you were on Cowboys Hour, we just asked you, you know, have you picked up any hobbies with your extra spare time? And you were like, actually, today I went and picked up a bow and you were going to start hunting. Right. Did you continue on that hobby? Is that still something you do? Uh, yes, I actually got a new bow oh, about a week and a half ago. Yeah. So because I bought that one off eBay, I was like, I'll, under- I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll kind of the first one. Way. Yes. OK. And then this one I bought from Hoyt directly. So excited! I've so now you're times. you're kind of like a semi expert now. I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, I, I'm not going to say that I'm an expert. I got a lot of practicing to do, but I, I do enjoy it. Well, you you're a guy who took up bowling, but now you've got your own ball and shoes, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I mean, right. you you went right. To, you knew what you wanted in uh-huh. a bow. Yep. Like what it what was different? What do you need in a Blake Jarwin bow? And when, by the way, will there be a Blake Jarwin signature bow? <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a Cameron Haynes bow. Uh, he's a famous bow hunter. Uh, I, like can a, I just tell you one thing? He's not that famous. He's yeah. Well, in the bow hunting world, everybody who's ever world. heard of Cameron Haynes, raise your hand. That's what I'm oh, trying see, to say. Got yeah. one oh, maybe. Yeah. It your was wife, ten. I'm sorry. I don't want to say that your wife doesn't count because she definitely counts, but you don't count. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it's been awesome. Um, I just wanted kind of my own, my first bow, you know, like I said, the other one was off eBay. So I decided I'd go kind of step it up and have my first brand new bow. Do you go with anyone on the team? Uh, I've talked to Leighton about it a little bit. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. We haven't done any shooting or anything like that, but we've definitely talked about it. Does he, um, tell you that you have work to do before you're up to his <laughs> level to be able to go hunting with I, him? He doesn't have to tell me. I definitely, <laughs> I definitely know I have some work So you're to not going to have like a take on the wolf hunter as a nickname anytime soon? Right. No, not even close. Okay. Well, what does he close. hunt? Uh, we talked about him. I think he's going to do an elk hunt um, on the bye week, I think is kind of his plan right now. Um, so he's kind of a big, you know, big game hunter. And, like and what, what are you hunting? I'll be mostly no. deer hunting. Um, cause I'll be up in, you know, North Texas, Oklahoma area. 
and as a, I guess he'll go back home and, and do the elk hunting. That sounds like a big animal to me, animal to me still. <laughs> Deer, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, do you w- w- tell us something about a really high quality bow that you look for when you went to find this bow that we wouldn't know? What, what would you want? You, you want to know honestly how I landed the bow that I have? Yeah, of course. I couldn't find another one that was long enough for my. My reach. <laughs> Your so massive wingspan. I, I can get this one to 32 and a half uh, on the pool. And so that's how I kind of landed with the Hoyt. Um, I know there's two big brands, Hoyt and Matthews, and uh, Matthews wouldn't make one that was long enough for me. So that's kind of how I They wouldn't. I, got to, I, don't, I mean, I'm sure they, they, they might. They wouldn't or they didn't. I didn't. I didn't really ask. I didn't really go into it. Do they know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> they may, you know, uh, they may not care, honestly. they got a lot of guys who care. Those well, men. I think we're going to get them to care, <laughs> and I think that Matthews, was that the company? Matthews, yeah. Okay, we'll be In make- about a week, you're going to be sponsored. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be making uh, just a note of that, and you can expect to see uh, Blake Jarwin doing TV ads for uh, Matthews Bows. I think that, see, he likes the idea, don't you? I love that idea. That right. We're going to go to work on that. We're going to put a <laughs> microphone up so you guys can ask questions of Blake Jarwin when we come back. Miller Lite Cowboys Hour is brought to you by Jack Black Skincare. Want to use what the pros use? Jack Black is the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit getjackblack.com today. We'll be right back on the Cowboys Hour. Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons and Omni Hotels and Resorts. And welcome back to the Ford Center at the Star. Brad Sham and Danny Sarek and our special guest, Cowboys tight end Blake Jarwin. We will go to your questions in just a moment. But Danny's not quite done 
grilling young Mr. Jarwin within an inch of his life. I've got a really serious question for you. Um, you guys were the Hard Knocks team this year. They're not here anymore. Yes. HBO, they were following you guys around all throughout training camp, leading up to the start of the season. Mm -hmm. I know you watched an episode. Which episode did you watch, and I guess what, what stood out to you? Um, I think they were kind of focused on uh, Azur and Isaac and kind of, you know, their families, and that was pretty neat. Uh, I know Azur's mom got to come to the games and uh, cheer him on, and I think that was so cool. And obviously Isaac, man, he's a great guy um, to just kind of, you know, see his family and kind of understand them a little bit more and uh, see how proud they are of him was incredible. So it was, it was really unique. We didn't see a lot of major moments with you. Were you hiding from the cameras <laughs> on purpose? Uh, yeah, there's, you know, I wouldn't say I was hiding. I wasn't necessarily seeking the cameras out. Um, but, you know, there was, uh, we were mic'd up for practice, and I guess they just didn't have fun enough stuff. Uh, you know, it, they, I guess they didn't think we were entertaining enough to kind of put us on the big screen. Now, here... Some guys, look, you can't not know they're there. I mean, there, there's four, four of them standing around the huddle. There's a gigantic boom mic dropped right into the <laughs> middle of your drill. You can't not know they're there. Right. You can forget when you're in a meeting room. Yes. And there's yes. nobody apparently there. Right. That there's a little red light up in the corner of the room mm -hmm. and some things get said that people don't know are being right. Talked about. You know, they're pretty savvy with those little microphones, though, because they'll set it, like, right here on top of your head, so you don't see it until you say something, you're like, oh, man. Yeah, oh. but but <laughs> some guys. Oh, my mom doesn't hear that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but some guys are sharp enough to know when they are zeroing in on your area mm -hmm. and might say, I'm not saying this happened. Some guys might say, let's zip it today because... Uh, yeah, we got some extra. Did that happen? Surveillance? Yeah, I think so. I think <laughs> having uh, just extra cameras around kind of make you a little skittish, I guess. But no, I think overall, I think uh, it was a great. Uh, we did a great job as a team, and uh, just kind of didn't let it become a huge distraction to us. Okay, let's take some questions from our audience at the Ford Center. Thanks. Good evening, Blake. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing, man? Good. Thank you. Good. Good. I have a question. Yes, sir. With Collins out and the shuffling of the offensive line. Do you think that's going to take away opportunity from you and uh, <clears throat> you and uh, uh, Dalton from getting the ball and more in a position to to uh, block Dak? Uh, well, you know, uh, obviously, LC is a big part of our offense, and not having him around will uh, definitely affect us a little bit. But we'll do a great job uh, game planning and uh, doing what's necessary to make sure that we keep Dak clean in the pocket. Uh, that kind of goes back to making sure that. We don't necessarily need the ball in our hands to, to feel like we're uh, helping the team. We want to make sure that uh, we give Dak time to throw the ball or whether it's uh, another guy in the run game that we got to make sure we take care of um, just to make sure that we uh, you know are successful on offense as a group. Well, well, let's get right to this, Blake. Couldn't we solve this problem and get both of you on the field if Dalton just played right Dak? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pitch that to him tomorrow. Yeah, we'll good, yeah. Dalton, yeah. Dalton, Dalton, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you let them know it's Brad's idea. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh I, know what, I know what Dalton will think, yeah, especially if Bosa lines up over him. Yeah. Right, right. I know what he'll think. Yes, sir. Hey Blake, my name is Corey. Uh, hey Corey. I was wondering, what was what's the biggest challenges or adjustments have you seen from college to the NFL? And one more quick question: um, What's your favorite route to run? I want to say it might be the seam route, but I could be wrong. You're absolutely right. I love to <laughs> run up the middle of the field. Uh, too high safeties. Uh, just take the middle and uh, see where Dak puts the ball because I know it'll be perfect and right on the money. But um, I'd say that's a great question. Uh, the biggest challenge is becoming a professional, I think. Uh, it's so much more than just on the field um, in the NFL. And uh, that was a big part for me is learning how to watch film and learning how to study opponents and uh, just learning the game of football a little bit more than I did in college. Uh, great question, Corey. And it makes me think when he talked about you being in college, we'd be remiss if we did not get your – look at the look in his eye. He's kind of anticipating. He's anticipating. I have no idea. Um, if we didn't ask you uh, your thoughts about Oklahoma and Texas oh, deciding yeah. they don't need to be in the Big 12 anymore. Uh, well, if you're talking about how I had a smile on my face when I saw the score of the Texas-Arkansas <laughs> game. So, you know, uh, no, uh, you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, I'm glad the Big 12 staying together. I saw that we just invited, I think, four other teams mm -hmm. to kind of join the conference. So um, it's awesome. Uh, 
you know, it's uh, it's going to be definitely a different landscape. Uh, you know, I've never seen a Big 12 without, you know, those two teams. And obviously a lot of other people haven't either. So uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, hopefully we can keep Bedlam alive. I'm not sure how we'll we'll make sure that happens, but uh, hopefully so. That, that was my next question because when – I, I'm a Missouri guy. They they chose to go somewhere they don't belong, in my opinion, and broke up a hundred year rivalry with Kansas. A and M did the same thing with with Texas. Ha ha ha! You can't run forever, <laughs> apparently. Uh, um, Bedlam's a huge deal yeah. in college sports, not just in the state of Oklahoma. Basketball and football, both. Right. What would it be? You're an Oklahoman. What would that be like if there was no more? Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I think it'll be tough. I think that uh, a lot of people in Oklahoma find joy in that competition and, uh, you know, yelling at each other and, uh, you know, picking sides and um, just talking trash to each other all year long. So uh, we'll kind of see how it plays out. Um, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll be interesting. What a great non-answer. Guess I'm, guess I'm sad about it. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was an almost perfect non-answer. It was <laughs> really, really getting good at that. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know you love that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do so much. Hey, Blake. It's Colby. Hey, Colby. Hey, biggest question is, what have you learned personally from just being in your professional career from going from college ball to the NFL? Yeah, um, I'd just say um, my biggest lesson uh, is when I was a rookie, and obviously 82 was in the room, uh, Jason Witten, uh, watching him for about six months, uh, just how he was a professional, how he went about his daily life, how he went about – his life on the field, how he prepared to be on the field, how uh, what he did off the field. Uh, man, the guy would get here super early, and he'd be one of the last guys to ever leave this building. Uh, he loved the preparation like he loved the games on Sunday, and I think that that's an important uh, kind of note for me as I carry out my career. Can you imagine what it would be like being a high school kid playing for him? <laughs> I was just thinking about that. I'm pretty sure they won their first game. They did. Were you, did you guys – I know some, uh, some of your teammates Zeke went. Zeke and Dak went to the first one, I know for sure. Yeah, I think they're one and one right now. So. Oh, they lost a game. Yeah, I think uh, Well, so. the bandwagon's empty now. Right, right now. Uh, <laughs> that's a, an awesome experience, though, for Witt to, to go out there and coach high school ball, and uh, hopefully I get to catch a game. That would be great. Uh, seriously, what would it be like in your – as you imagine it for a high school kid to be exposed to the way you know he is. Yeah, I don't, I, I try to put myself <laughs> in those shoes and that's, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how they'll handle it. I'm sure they're doing a great job and I'm sure Witt's handling it really well. And, you know, those kids are going to you know, get a coach that uh, they, they should learn more from in a year than some players will learn from in, you know, 12 years. So I would like to think that one of the first things he did as a head coach was in the locker room, you know, where you put something above the door frame and it says secrets in the dirt. Uh -huh, yeah. that, that's what I like to envision. I think that maybe probably he did. Probably so, yeah. That, that, could very, very, probably that could be right. That mm -hmm. could very well be right. Let me ask you one question about uh, because it's in our contracts. If we look in the bottom <laughs> paragraph, every, every guest has to be a, has to be asked a question about your quarterback. So um, he he is to me one of the most unusual guys in sports that I've ever met, or or in or out of sports. He's such a natural leader, and what he's come back from is really remarkable. The way he's done it. What does that transmit to his teammates yeah like you said he's a natural born leader uh his presence is felt uh whether he's in the building and especially when he's in that huddle with us all and uh, he's the guy who leads a team um and man i i don't even remember your your real question brown i'm sorry but I mean, what is his the way he comes back as yeah, a leader yeah, from was, all of that what is that how does that transmit to the rest there of was you? never a doubt that he was going to come back and be a leader of his team but i think that he showed even more so that he was going to lead this team. And, um, you know, when he was rehabbing, uh, <laughs> the guy was out there when it was 100 degrees outside running as much as he could, just almost passing out because he was like, man, I got to be ready for these guys. And uh, I think every, everybody saw that and uh, everybody respects him, obviously, and even more so now. The guy's just, uh, man, he, he loves the work, he loves the grind, and he makes sure that he's working with us. You know, he's not necessarily just telling us what to do. He's like, look, I'm going to – I'm going to push myself with you guys. Um, we have exactly one minute left, and uh, this is the time when I'm going to uh, have to tell our audience that uh, this is Danny's last show because she just got a great job with the Arizona Cardinals. And so she is like... Don't awe, I've already been emotionalized. She's, she's ready all, behind me. She's already packing and moving, and I just want to tell everyone what I have told her 
Uh, I think Danny is a star. She's just so gifted, and you're going to do great. And I'm trying to make you cry. And am I am I working? You sure are. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> you're going to do just super. And I miss you already. And Thank um, you. we're blessed to have had a chance to work with you. All the Thank best. You. Good luck to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's been well, really great to work with you guys. All right. We'll see you in January. January we'll see 2nd. Y- all of you next week. Thanks to Blake Jarwin for being with us. We'll see you next see you Monday later. on the Cowboys Hour. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?